Hi everyone, welcome again to the structural biology course. Today, we are going to discuss a complete different thing than what we have discussed before. We have discussed about sequences, we have discussed about structures, but all of them were in static mode. Today, I am going to introduce you in the world of dynamics. So, this is the first class of molecular dynamics simulation. To start with, I have posed a question which might be in all of your mind, why we need dynamics? Here is a crude example which will tell you how the pictures are not giving us true story always. You are looking in this picture, a man is running and another man is chasing with a dagger. But the scenario could be totally oppositely represented. Sarcastically, we say it is media, but it is true that by taking picture, a lot of things could be represented in a very different way than what the reality is. So, as I told, pictures could be wrongly projected. Let us look at some of the pictures which people have taken and tell you a story which is actually not in the scene. So, I told picture could be wrongly projected. Now, in this high technical world, you might argue that videos could also be wrongly projected. I agree, but I would say pictures could be wrongly projected very easily. Even the common people without technological expertise could have done that. Also, if you look at this picture where Steffi Graf is facing a tennis ball, you would want to know about what happened next. So, picture sometimes as I told tell us wrong stories, but picture also sometimes tells us incomplete stories. And as I told with the help of dynamics, we could have solved this problem. You see the few figures I have presented here, you see how an ammonia is coming to the complex and forming a bond. It was not possible to present this scenario, this series of events by using static structures. Similarly, in any complex, if there is a movement, it is difficult how the solvent is moving, it is difficult how a membrane protein interact with the membrane, it is difficult how in a crystal the molecules are moving, it is difficult how a change of conformation of the protein could be defined, it is difficult. So, molecular dynamic simulation have solved all these problems, but it also have its challenges. Like if you follow my class, you already know that in previous classes we have discussed about the PDB file, the coordinate information and you see that for a protein structure, the PDB file is so big. Now, start imagining with the movement of the molecules at homes, there will be further changes in the coordinates, you will get many coordinates. So, how difficult it would be to handle or manage those huge data, how or what other information you need, like when you are 
presenting coordinate you are presenting coordinate but now you are sending change so you have to present like the change of coordinates with respect to time when you are presenting a coordinate most of the time you are presenting it at the lowest energy now there might be change of energy all those things you have to include this module contains five classes it would not make you an expert in molecular dynamic simulation but it would be a humble effort from my side to give you a basic knowledge of the process of the terms regarding the molecular dynamic simulation of macromolecules mostly taking proteins. So, how to define molecular dynamic simulation? It is a process to study and analyze the dynamic nature of the system. As I told earlier, it could be applied to a system that is what the beauty of this technique as small as an atom and a diatomic molecule which are undergoing chemical reaction or as large as galaxy and you could do anything in between them. The tool to perform MD or molecular dynamics is called computer simulation. So, that is why it is called molecular dynamics simulation. So, what is computer simulation? Is the process of mathematical modeling performed on a computer which is designed to predict the behavior or the outcome of a real or physical system. Definitions are always you know confusing. So, let me define it in a more elaborative way. Journey from real system to model system and defining computer simulation. So, you have a real system and now when you want to apply theory, you have to develop a model. That is the initial criteria to go for computation or anything theoretical. So, you have a real system, you develop a model, you get a model system. There is a real system, there is a model system. The real system, because it is in your hand, you could perform experiment. Whereas, in a model system, you could perform simulation, that is what computer simulation or you could develop theoretical hypothesis. You could make some hypothesis looking at the model system. When you perform experiment, you get experimental results pretty straightforward. When you perform simulation, you get the simulation results. When you develop theoretical hypothesis, you get some prediction coming out of the theory. So, what happened ultimately? You compare them and you make your model realistic by the help of the experimental result comparing with the simulation results. Whereas, you could make it even better by compare and improve your theoretical assumptions. You have the experimental results, you have the simulation results, but in addition, you take also the prediction from theory more you combine, more you make your model system close to reality and why it is essential? Because then you could perform experiments, experiments means simulation experiment or theoretical experiment. You do not have to spend money or there are many things which we are discussing in brief again. There are impossibility of performing the experiment. It might be expensive, it might be dangerous, we will talk about. So, MD simulation in biological system. Let me introduce you to a biological system and show you how people have developed models. This is a very interesting video from science where you see the movement or flying of a butterfly. You see the butterfly is moving and they have turn the video recording and take 1000 frames per second that is the speed and then analyze the top view and side view and from all those they have developed the model of how a butterfly actually is flying. So, in molecular dynamics 
one of the principal tools in the theoretical study of biological macromolecule is MD simulation. As I told, if you look at biology is very dynamic and until a very long time, we were trying to study biology, you are trying to understand biology by ignoring these dynamics. Introduction of molecular dynamic simulation have given us that opportunity. It calculate the time dependent behavior of a molecular system, be it a protein, protein complex, DNA, protein DNA, anything you could calculate. It provides detailed information on the fluctuation and conformational changes of proteins and nucleic acids, how they move, how their atomic coordinates change, but more importantly, how those changes are related or correlated to biology. Used to investigate the structure, dynamics and thermodynamics of biological molecules and their complexes. So, we already know what are the challenges or problems in biology, but among them few are actually understood in a much better way by the introduction of this theoretical process called MD simulation. One of them definitely is protein folding. Protein folding after so many years of research as I have told in the protein structure section, normal structure section when I talk about protein every time I was talking about because this is considered as one of the biggest enigma of biological science. And I have talked also multiple time, if we could understand the detailing of protein folding, it could have gives us very like interesting weapons to understand a lot of disease. It would help us to understand the biological process details, mechanism and it would be really critical for many field of biomedical science. As you see here, how there are intermediate states in the protein folding, identifying them, correlating them with the function, because we now know with all our discussion, the protein is not restricted themselves to one conformation. So, they shift between their conformation. Even more interestingly, when they should be static, they are still dynamic. There are vibrations and stretching and all those things going on. Understanding them, ability to calculate them, identify the changes gives us lot of advantage towards understanding better biology. Also, if you look at protein ligand interaction, which is critical to understand many disease process, many drug designing. Here is the example of a protein deoxycytidine kinase. I am not going into detail, but the protein have a substrate, the enzyme have a substrate called deoxycytidine, which converts to deoxycytidine monophosphate. The enzyme apparently looks like it cannot convert deoxythymidine to deoxythymidine monophosphate showing selectivity. But when we start the mutational analysis and all, we have seen that what apparently is not possible is actually possible and by solving two crystal structures as you see here, they have optimized their positions and that is why they could prevent themselves from the steric class. So, it takes us development of mutants, it takes us development of two crystal structures and kinetic analysis and all. So, lot of time and money, but if we could have developed model where the dynamic small molecules are present or movement of the proteins. So, if we see small molecule movement 
or if we see macromolecules movement, that would help us saving time and money already getting the understanding through the study of theory. And as I told, the beauty of theory is if you could develop a theoretical model realistic to your system, you could have done countless number of experiments because then you could use your computer, you do not need to do the actual experiments. There are a number of applications, the best is protein stability. I would talk about this in the case study because protein stability or protein engineering, which is one of my applications topic, I will discuss at the end. Dynamics, molecular dynamics have contributed very significantly. Change of conformation, as I continuously talked about, proteins are there in the cell. It is like a factory, but there is no regulator, and the only regulation or the major regulation comes through the change of conformation of the protein. So, understanding them is extremely critical to understand the function, which is our major goal. Protein folding, I have already discussed about. Molecular recognition, proteins, DNA, membrane, all the complexes. Ion transport in biological system, drug designing. These are all very interesting areas where significant progress are now happening with the help of molecular dynamic simulation. Last, but again, not the least and very interestingly, MD simulation also contribute to the structure determination, especially on X-ray and NMR. If you see when we are doing the model building, I have talked about we have undergone a process called refinement. Because we are doing manual building, there might happen mistakes or something and all this could be corrected by running refinement cycles. Refinement cycles are actually defining the actual criteria, bond length, bond angle and all these things which are already in the library, pushing the already made model towards energy minimization. And that is where we use MD simulation. How energy minimization? happened in MD simulation, we will talk about in the next two classes. When we are talking about molecular dynamics, especially in biology, we cannot ignore the famous scientist Richard Feynman. I have already talked about this, but I still want to repeat this to show you how beautifully he have imagined the progress. So, in his own language, certainly no subject or field is making more progress on so many fronts at the present moment than biology. And if we were to name the most powerful assumption of all, which leads one on and on in an attempt to understand life, it is that all things are made of atoms, the concept of atom, and that everything that living things do can be understood in terms of the jigglings and wigglings of atoms. Before going into detail, let us look at the history which have made the backbone of the technology MD simulation. In 1900, when people were developing spectroscopy, the concept of force field comes and that is very important because when you are doing a dynamics, you are putting your system in a force field and you are putting a force. In 1929, model vibrational excitation, atomic potentials which are PM Morse and J. E. Leonard Jones, to, even today they are successfully used. 1937, London dispersion force due to polarization, this is the origin of Van der Waals we are going to discuss. 1946, molecular mechanics use of Newton's equation and force field for the characterization of molecular conformation. So, how from a force field, we are going to a computational process 
that journey was coming around 1950s when Manhattan Project and I am coming into. So, in 1953, Monte Carlo simulation after the Manhattan Project, which helps generating computational use a lot, where the computation of thermodynamic properties, Metropolis, Van Neumann, Taylor, Fermi are the significant contributor. In 1957, first simulation, hard sphere MD simulation, first introduced by Alder and Wainwright. Further significant step, MD of liquid argon, Rahman carried out the first simulation using a realistic potential for liquid argon. 1970s very critical simulation of liquids, water, molten salts, metals. Again, Rahman was there, Stillinger, Katlau. There are development of numerous algorithms to handle long range Coulomb interactions. So, non covalent bonds could be handled. Ewald summation method, development of potentials, Born, Mayer, Huggins, or BMH. This BMH helps in 1976 first simulation of silica. Uh, using this BMH potential. They also have achieved tetrahedral coordinations, Woodcock, Angel, Souls are the significant contributor. 1977, a year which was very significant, first protein simulation by McCammon appeared in 1977 with the simulation of the protein bovine pancreatic tipsin inhibitor or BPTI. Here there should be a gap inhibitor. In 1980, Anderson constant pressure algorithm, Rahman Perinello constant pressure algorithm. Then Carr Perinello, this is the quantum mechanical MD using density function theory. We are now going into the ability to calculate the reactions. 1990s, improvement of interaction potentials, Stillinger Weber, Basista, Finney. Sicoti, three body, multi body, charge transfer, reactive force fields, Goddard, Madden, a lot of significant improvements. 1992, uh, rather than development, it could say a institutional update transfer of CCAM to Lion, which made promotion and tutorials of advanced computational method in material science. 2000s, there are improvement and massive diffusion of CPMD, which is Car Perinello Quantum Mechanical MD techniques among the community need of massively parallel computing. So, the bigger molecules are coming into play now, more bigger molecules are coming, they contain many hundreds of atoms. So, requirement of computer power is increasing day by day. As a result of that, in 2013, Nobel Prize in Chemistry was given to Martin Karplas, Michael Levitt, Ariel Wurzel. I am not going into details, but few things would really be significant to talk about. Martin Karplas, uh, first of all, this is the first time where a Nobel Prize is given to the acknowledgement of a field development, not to a individual innovation. Just take an example like PCR was invented by Carrie Mullins. So, a person and a product, Sanger sequencing by Sanger, not here. These three guys were given Nobel Prize because the scientific community wanted to acknowledge the contribution of this technique especially in the field of chemistry, physics, biology. Martin Karplas is the person who actually helped bringing others by taking all the different programs people have written and writing that into one program package called CHARM. Michael Levitt have developed the physics backbone and area Warsell significantly contributed to specially the QMMM models where you get a very interesting opportunity. Now, you could study how an enzyme is behaving while making a 
reaction. So these innovations are significant, but more importantly, this was an acknowledgement to the field. I always talk highly about Richard Feynman. So, in his Nobel laureate lecture posed in 1984, he had given a question, how small can you make machinery, more or smaller you are going for the development you are making. To answer him, in 2016, Sobhaj, Stoddard and Feringa was awarded with Nobel Prize in Chemistry. You might say how this is related to MD simulation. So, let us look what they did. They have developed the smallest molecular machine. If you look at this machine, they are calling it as a auto driving car a nano motor and they have developed idea definitely it is a long work it is a huge work different contribution development of catenine development of rock octane and all this coming into but what helped them is the huge background of study of molecular motors using the technology of molecular dynamic simulation. Those background have not only inspired them, but also give them direct information to develop a synthesized motor. And if I talk about now standing on 2020, in these few years, already these motors are used in target specific drug designing and many other applications. So, why we do simulation? I have talked about this before in a broader way, but now we want to replace experiment. We want to design or provoke new experiment. And sometime we want to explain some experiments where we do not understand what is there and why the outcome is like that. So, more going into the mechanistic details, we want to perform experiment. In some cases, experiments are impossible like inside the stars, weather forecasts, Sometimes it is too dangerous like flight simulation, explosion simulation. Sometimes they are very expensive, high pressure simulation, wind channel simulation. Sometimes it is blind, we have no idea. Some properties cannot be observed on very short time scale and very small space scales. So, we need to develop models for them. So, why molecular dynamic simulation? There are most popular three dynamic methods used. One is Brownian movement, second is Monte Carlo and third is this molecular dynamic simulation. This is most realistic simulation. It could provide structure and dynamic information. We start from structure, so atomic coordinates and all are there. So, we have total control here and it could work on both native and non-native condition. Like as I was talking about, there is a explosion going on. So, how you could catch it, how you could understand it? You have to create further explosion, you have to make a lot of damage, but by molecular dynamic simulation, you could have perform. There is a very popular story we have heard when the American soldiers were went back from the war field because of them staying for a long time in the war base, many of them had problem in hearing. But the doctors had not much idea how to treat them. 
So, in Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center, they have created a model by developing models of physical human body, especially focusing on the three bones which are needed for hearing those tiny bones, how they are affected and how the system is affected by the OR situation where the sound decibels are really high. And by developing this model, they have understood, they have worked on and by those understanding, the surgeons, the medical surgeons have done minor operations, minor surgeries and most of the soldiers, they got their hearing back. As I was talking about Brownian movement, most of the models are not fit, especially when we are talking about atomistic models. Monte Carlo have contributed significantly. I am not going into details as I told in an introductory class. I am just giving you an example how to differentiate between Monte Carlo and MD simulation. We are talking about the butterfly movement. If you consider the movie of a butterfly movement, that is MD simulation. But if you take the photographs which are freezing the butterfly movements good enough to explain the entire flying mechanism, that is Monte Carlo. So, if you look at what are the advantages, I am talking about three situations in the in vivo where you have your cell, you culture your cell and you get a lot of proteins. In in vitro, where you are targeting a specific protein, you do the cloning, purification and but still you get a your protein in high number. So, the copy of your proteins are very high. But in in silico, you get only one protein or few protein what you want to set up your experiment. So, if we compare them in in vivo, you get your proteins which are the blue dots, but you get many other proteins with this. In in vitro, you again get the purified protein in multiple copy, whereas in in silico, you will get one or few according to how you set up or how you want to set up. And more importantly, you will get the information about the coordinates. So, by having these two, controlling the number and controlling the coordinate and further you apply force field, so you see the changes in the coordinates, you have a lot of controls in the MD simulation experiment. Coming to the process of molecular dynamic simulation of macromolecules. So, if you compare molecular dynamic simulation process with experiment, you prepare sample, here you prepare the systems and I will talk about how you prepare the system specially for protein. After preparation of the system, you connect sample to measuring instrument. For example, you have a protein solution, you want to do spectroscopy, you connect it to the spectroscopy uh, instrument and you do the measurement. Here you solve the equation of motion. You in experiment after connecting you measure property of interest of set time interval. Here you extract the position and velocity data, the coordinate and the change of coordinate with time that is velocity. In experiment, you average to minimize the statistical noise, you get the data. Here you use statistical mechanics to extract properties. So, molecular dynamics simulate the movement of all the particles in a molecular system by iteratively solving Newton's equation of motion. So, what we need here, very important, we need a force field. Then, in the force field, 
we divide the time into discrete time steps okay like a very reasonable time step is 1 femtosecond time step and then we have our coordinate system and we apply force to that. So, I talk about time step, let us take a look at the time scale of protein motion and MD simulation. So, bone stretching, a stretch between two atom is in the scale between femtosecond to picosecond. Elastic vibration, especially of protein, is coming on the nanosecond level. Alpha helix folding is coming between nanosecond to microsecond. Beta hairpin folding is around in microsecond level. Protein folding, which we are looking for, is around millisecond to second level. So, if you look at this, and if you know about MD simulation, you know that from the literature, we see that simulation of protein is generally happen at the nanosecond time scale. But all the event of protein folding happen in higher order of time scale. So, why? How it is feasible? It is very interesting. We study protein folding. Here in MD simulation, the major focus of the system goes through instead of folding of protein, we study unfolding of protein. So, we go on the reverse direction in MD simulation. And if you see, we will talk about disadvantages and all, but if you see the advantage directly, so when you are going from folded to unfolded, you already have the folded information coming from the experiment. And that is the reason MD simulation, even if it is a theoretical method, it is called semi-empirical or semi-experimental method. So, as I told in molecular dynamics, we have a force field, we will calculate the forces. What is the size and time scale of movement? In the nanometer level, we do quantum mechanics where the electrons are there. It is mostly femtosecond picosecond level. In relatively higher nanosecond, atoms are there and we do molecular dynamics. Higher mesoscale, we use the simulation of or movement of mesoparticles and in the macro scale, we treat the elements. Now, as I told, we know that we are applying classic Newtonian physics for protein, but it needs the force field so that we could calculate the effects of the component of the protein. So, let us take a look on the development of the force field because this is one of the most critical thing to understand. In molecular dynamics, a molecule is described as a series of charge points which are atoms linked by the springs. So, you have two atoms connected with the spring. That is what the model is. To describe the time evolution of bond length, so you get the bond length, bond angle and torsion, torsion is the dihedral and the non-bonding van der Waal and electrostatic and hydrogen bonding interaction. So, in bonded there is bond length bond angle and torsion, dihedral. In non-bonding, there is van der Waal, electrostatic and hydrogen bonding. The force field is a collection of equation and associated constant designed to reproduce molecular geometry and selected properties of the tested structure. So, you have six component, you look at them, understand their physics, develop equation. So, you have six component of the equation, 
now you apply the force field and see how it is deforming the atom and how it change the coordinates and all the associate parameters. So, coming to the atomic interactions, as I told, there are bonded interactions and non-bonded interactions. So, bonded and non-bonded. In bonded interaction, there is stretching. As I told, you consider them connected in a spring. So, if you have a spring and two atoms and if you put a force, they will be expanded and if you release it, they would be contracted. So, they would be like doing this. Okay. Then they would come to a equilibrium and that equilibrium is bond length. So, if you put energy and the distance, the equilibrium R0 would be the bond length. Energy of stretching represents the energy required to stretch or compress a covalent bond. Okay. So, again, because it is a spring, so they would be, you know, approximated or calculated with the like model of Hookean potential of an ideal spring. So, a bond can be thought of as a spring having its own equilibrium length R0 and the energy required to stretch or compress it can be approximated by the Hookean potential for an ideal spring. So, the energy would be half Ks, Ks is the stretching constant. R i j is the any position. You take it, you put a force, it expanded, then you release, it, it, it is doing that. So, any position is R i j when i and j are two atoms and R 0 is the equilibrium position. Half k s R i g minus R 0 whole square. This is the model of a realistic situation how the bond stretching happen in a protein. Both the, this is the spring constant or stretching constant and the ideal bond length, they would be dependent on the atoms involved. So, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, they have their own spring constant and bond length. Bending Bending is similarly of stretching, but instead of 2, you have 3. So, you will do in this. The curve is same. Instead of energy stretching, there is energy bending. Instead of bond length, there would be bond angle, which is theta or Q. Anything you could be presenting. E bend again is the energy required to bend a bond from its equilibrium angle q0. As I told, if you consider q i j k, it is q0, theta i j k, theta 0. Again, this system can be modeled by a spring and the energy is given by the Hookean potential with respect to angle in a similar way. The spring constant and the ideal angle are also dependent on the chemical type of the atom. So, when you consider a carbon, Okay, it form bonds if it is sp3 hybridized. Remember, I talked about this angle would be 109 degree 28 minute. In that way, you will get every bonds. I have already explained it. E bend similarly is half kb, where kb is the bending constant and Q i j k is any position, Q 0 is the equilibrium position. So, this is a realistic situation. Coming to the torsion, it would be described by a dihedral angle. You already know that phi and psi are extremely important for protein and understanding the change of phi and psi, you could have determined the conformation and a model 
would be validated or not. So, energy would be k phi 1 minus cos n phi where n is the symmetry. The symmetry again depends on the how the geometry of a atom involved. So, like when as I was talking about carbon it is single bond it have one with double bond it have one and in that way. So, as I told there are three type of interaction between bonded atoms stretching along the bond, bending between the bond and rotating around the bonds and this is the entire picture. Coming to non-bonded interaction van der Waals, if you have two atoms initially, they will have no interaction. So, you see the flat curve where no interaction happens. Then when they are coming closer, nuclei of one would attract others electron. So, the energy would be released like reduced and after some distance when they are more closer, there would be nuclei, nuclei and electron, electron repulsion which will be defined by the enhancing of the curve. The energy would be defined at A by r to the power 12 minus b by r to the power 6, where it is defined as the distance. E van der Waal is the steric exclusion and long range attraction energy. This is non covalent and this tells where the steric class could be prohibited. Coulomb, as you know, Coulomb is charge. It is the Coulomb potential function for electrostatic interaction of charges. So, if you see the electrostatic energy with the distance and it is same as you know in the charge field it is q1 q2 by r square which we have studied in our 10 plus 2 level is same here qi qj is q1 q2 and rij is the distance only the k is coulomb constant and epsilon is important this is dielectric constant which is in vacuum 0 and when it comes to the water it is 80. So, each of the solvent have their characteristic dielectric constant. Coming to the hydrogen bonds which we have already talked about, a hydrogen bond is a primarily electrostatic force of attraction between a hydrogen atom which is covalently bound to a more electronegative atom or group. In case of protein, it is only nitrogen and oxygen. One would be the donor and another would be the acceptor. The physics behind is like van der Waals, but here instead of, so it is C by r to the power 12, same like that, but instead of B by r to the power 6, it is r to the power 10, that is the difference. So, a general form of all atom force field is bond stretching term, angle bending term, dihedral term, hydrogen bonding term, van der Waals term and electrostatic term. The first requirement is to get the coordinate which we could get from the all techniques we have discussed in high resolution structure determination, crystallography, NMR, cryo-electron microscopy and we could also get experimental information from in vitro and in vivo data. The major steps, now we come to major step to perform molecular dynamic simulation. We will build a realistic atomistic model of the system. We will simulate the behavior of your system over time using specific conditions and then we will do the analysis of the results obtained from MD and relate because as I told in MD we take microscopic uh, properties, we will relate it to the macroscopic level properties. So, today in this introduction class, I have introduced the basic requirement and reasons behind the molecular dynamic simulation, 
why it required in biology and why it is essential for biological experiments, how it have played critical role and what are the application and more importantly, how the process would be related to experiment, how the process is performed and how the algorithm would be applied in a force field using the Newtonian physics and we end up with what is the force field, what are the parameters and how the parameters are contributing in the total equation. So, thank you very much for listening.